Hi, good morning. How are you doing today? I thank God for this beautiful day. I want to share something. Some experience I had this morning. I wasn't going to share it, but why not? Maybe it's for somebody. Maybe somebody will be blessed by it. Please stay with me. It's very important you listen to this message. I believe God is speaking to us. At these uncertain times, scary times, perilous times. If you if you if you look at me, you will see that I'm pale because of this experience. <laughs> it's scary, it's haunting. I don't know why God keeps doing this to me. Anytime I feel like I Anytime I feel like I am okay, I'm settling down, then the Lord shows me things that is that are scary. Please stay with me. It's not an ordinary dream, and I believe it. I only found out that it's not an ordinary dream when I was discussing this with my daughter. I'm going to go straight into it. Please, let your friends know about it. Let your relatives know. Share it with your children, with your family, and pray with them. It's my experience, but it could be anybody's experience. The whole of yesterday, you know, I started work, finished, but I was a bit down. You know, in between the my, my lunch, I slept off, woke up. And then, you know, I was myself. I wasn't myself, to be quite honest. I wasn't myself. And then in the night, I joined in this online um, training that I registered in from 12 a.m. Finished around, um, I think it was one or two I finished and I slept off. I prayed and I slept. And then I woke up with this. In fact, can you imagine from 2 a.m. to 8 a.m.? I was having, it looked like I was in this revelation. Please stay with me and share if you can. It's hunting, it's scary, it's painful. But I, I know that God, when he shows me revelations with people dear to me, he's, he means, he means his words. He, he wants me to know what he's saying. Anytime God shows things to me with my children, with my husband, with my dad, someone I love, then he's serious. So I woke up with this revelation and then I was thinking, what is going on? I went downstairs. I was, you know, washed my face brushed my teeth, cleaned up the house, went to the kitchen. Clean. I was so miserable. I was trying to understand this revelation. And then I came up with a cup of tea to see if I can, you know, get myself out of this cocoon. I sat here a bit, but I couldn't sit. So I went to Zina's room because the revelation was she was part and parcel of this revelation and my children and my family and i want to share this revelation with us i went to her room she was sleeping and i woke her up i said zina i want to share something i had a bad dream and i want to tell you what it is i sat down and she she sat up listening and i said to her in this revelation we went to nigeria <laughs> We went to Nigeria and I have my tickets, six tickets for us, all of us. And then we were waiting for the flight to be ready for departure. So if, even before they mentioned the flight was ready, it was more like a British, I don't know if it's British Airways or but it's an Airways, something Airways. It was all white. <laughs> all white so what what we, they keep saying is the flight is ready the flight is ready the flight is ready so we I went in they said no we need we all stood up in the line if you see the queue and meanwhile 
the flight was due to carry not a lot of people. But then the queue of people that would enter the same little tiny white flight baffled me. The queue was so long. So when we got to the, the, the queue, they said to us, we need another ticket, a boarding pass. I said, but I have it. I said, no, there's a little ticket we need to get in. So I quickly went to the dashboard. I spoke to this gentleman. He gave me all the boarding passes and we went in. But when we got in, by the time I got the boarding pass, I got in, the flight was nearly full. But we still had our places in front. Because it seems like we got a business class or something like that. We were in front. But then we all entered the boys, my husband. But then there's no space for Zina. I said, let's share. So they're like, there's, no, you're not going to share with her. Uh, she has to get down. I said, no, my daughter can't get down from this flight. No. She's ready. She has a ticket. She has the right to board. She can't get down. Before I knew it, um, the flight started to move. They were still, we, all, we got down. My daughter was down. They were still arguing. They closed the flight. They closed the, the flight, the plane, and then they started to move. I said, no, 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 no. No, my daughter is down. My daughter is down. I can't leave without her. So I was like, no, no, no. I started to cry. I started to, no, lead, wait, wait. My daughter is still down. The guy left. The pilot moved. So I was crying. I said, no, my daughter is there. I can't leave my daughter. 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 By the time we got to where we were going, my daughter was not in the flight. And then, I'm sorry, I'm crying. My daughter was not in the flight. So I was like, no. I said to my husband, she has the boarding pass. We have the right ticket. Why is she not here? I, we, she doesn't have a phone. She doesn't have money. And we left her in Nigeria. It's dangerous out there. The world is wicked. The world is dangerous. I, I'm sorry. As a young child, I can't leave her there. So I was like, no, I have to go back. So I said to my husband, stay with the boys. Keep the boys safe. I said, keep the boys safe. I'm coming. I'm going back for my daughter. I'm going back. I'm going back for my daughter. I'm going back. And then the scriptures kept coming in as this experience was unfolding. Let him, he that is on the rooftop stay. Oh God. I said, no, I'm going back. I can't leave my daughter there. It's dangerous. No. So I, God, I just started to pray, God, please, I need to go get my daughter. I need to go get my daughter. My daughter cannot be left in that zoo, in that place. It's dangerous. The world is dangerous. Then I started to pray, God, please give us one more chance. Let me go get my daughter, please. I was crying. I said, please, Lord, please. And then within a twinkle of an eye, I saw myself in a flash. And then from where I was, I saw myself in the airport where my daughter was. So I started looking for her. I started looking for her. I looked around. I was looking around. And then I saw her sat on the wall outside. And then I saw the boys congregating, the bad guys hanging around, some things going on. And I said, Zina, she saw me and she ran. She saw me. And she ran, she hugged me. Mommy, thank you for coming back. She said, thank you for coming back. I said, okay, that's fine. I came back for you. The Lord would not allow me to go without you. So I went back into the terminal. I'm sorry. I went back into the terminal and I got, I said, I have a ticket. The previous one, but I had to come back for my daughter. So I need... I need a return back so I can join my husband and my family. But I said, okay, that's fine. And then in that revelation, somebody said to me, you dare not enter. Um, there's a flight they mentioned. Um, I don't know if it's Cabo Air, but it says it's a local air flight. Don't enter this flight because it's a gateway to hell. It's a gateway to hell. 
and I, I was still marinating in, you know, those words. And it says, a gateway to hell. It kept echoing, gateway to hell. Take this flight. It says something airways, but not, it wasn't showing what it was. It's just a white flight. Um, this guy kept telling me it's very, very um, trustworthy. You can trust it and it's safe. That's the only flight that is safe that will take you to your final destination. So at least I have Z. I have Z with me. I have my daughter. So we, I got the ticket. I got the boarding pass. And we, we are waiting for the flight. And I woke up. I woke up. I held my daughter's hand in her room. This is now me sharing this experience with her. And I was... When I started sharing this experience with her, I said to her, this dream can mean three things. Three things. I'm not sure, I'm not exactly sure, but as I'm speaking, I can see three things out of it. So I told her the first one about the family. I told her the second one about herself. And then it was on the third one that the Lord spoke to me. And he said to me, the flight, the rapture, the rapture of the saints. <laughs> I started to cry. That was when I understood the meaning of the dream. When I was sharing this experience with Dina in her room. The Lord said to me, the end is nigh. The taking away of the sense is nigh. The enemy is trying everything to confuse people. You have the ticket. But if you are not careful, you're going to be wooed out. And any time he shows me anything regarding my family, I don't joke about it. It might be for everybody, but he just uses something dear to me to make me take it serious. And he started to minister to me concerning the flight of the scent. He started to speak to me, he says, take heed, take heed and fan into flames. Those things that are about to die, take heed. He started speaking to me and I just broke down. Zina will be my witness. I started to cry. She, she was shocked. And then she, I could see, see a bit of um, tears coming down her eyes. And I said to her, Zina, I think the Lord is telling us something. And exactly from my 16 to 17 years, I gave my life to Christ. And I think this is the time the Lord is telling me to lead you to him. You have done your church baptism. You've been singing in the choir. You've been leading the church in worship. But it's about time you get to know God yourself. So I said to her, what I'm about to do, I do it as I'm led. Are you happy for me to lead you to Christ? She said, yes, mommy. She said, yes. Yes, I'm, I'm ready. I could see tears coming out of her eyes. She said, yes, I'm ready. I led her. And I prayed for her. She, I finished praying for her, led her to Christ. She stood up and she hugged me. She hugged me and pat, she pat me on my side three times. And she said, thank you, mommy. <sighs> I thought to share this experience just in case I got to release it. I think it's about time and I believe it in my heart that the Lord is speaking to us as his body, as his bride, as a church. Seek God whilst he may be found. Seek God whilst he may be found. The time is drawing near. Once, I rem once it came to my remembrance, the flight, you don't know when it's going to happen. We had the ticket, we had the boarding pass, but something happened and one was dropped. Remember what Jesus said, two women will be in the field, one will be taken, the other left. Not my children, not my daughter, not my family. I'm going to go around once Ben is ready, I believe, is is once the ground is tilled, is the spirit that does the increase. Once he's ready, I'm going to speak to Ben, I'm going to speak to Divine, I'm going to speak to my little boy. I believe the Lord is preparing the church for the flight. If you are still in sin, it's about time you make your way straight 
straighten every crookedness. Because the hour cometh when grace will no longer abound. <laughs> I thank God I was able to, I was given the opportunity to return back to take my daughter. And I didn't want to mess around. I seized that opportunity and I led her to Christ. Because she's gone through that borders where she's going to start making her decisions. She gave me that opportunity and that right. And I led her to Christ. That, that's it. So I'm going to be, I'm going to continue to pray for her. Guide her through Bible studies. She's already doing that, but now is about doing it the right way to know God, to be in relationship with God, and to grow in faith. And I'm glad I am here as a mother to take her through it. It's no longer the time she colored her hair without me knowing. It's about me being there to ensure she makes the right decisions in Christ so that when this flight finally takes place, none of us will be left behind. So I'm also praying for you right now. If you're watching, watching right now, and if you listen through this to this end, know that God wants you to make it. I said when I was praying, I, I finished praying and leading Z to Christ. I said to her, there's joy in heaven over his soul that repents a uh, 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 a shepherd leaves 99 when a sheep is lost he leaves 99 and gets one and when he gets back the one he's happy the father to the prodigal son lost he has two children he has two sons he lost one but he never rested he never had peace until that one that lost that he lost came back to him so is our heavenly father before I go, I want to, because I'm going to be starting work soon, I want to use this opportunity to minister to anybody watching me right now. And you think that you are missing it. You think you're no longer in the line. You think you've lost it. I want to pray for you right now. I want to be able to lead you to Christ. We don't, I don't want, I pray, this experience is terrible. It's just, I don't, I can't even express how I felt and what I saw and how it is. But one thing I know is that, we don't have much time. The coming of our Lord Jesus, the flight is about to take place, is about to go. And we want every one of us to make it. I want every, I pray that everybody, every one of us will make it to the kingdom because that's our eternal goal. That's our life's goal. All these things we are doing here, we're doing it so we can make it to that place of peace and rest. And it shall be so. So I want to quickly please say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I come to you. Thank you for my life. Today I make a decision to accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. Take my, my name away from the book of death and translate me into the Lamb's book of life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And I am born again. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. If you pray this prayer, that's all it takes. That's all it is. Accept him. And when the flight should take place, you will be part of the flight. There won't be need to look back. Because what is about to come upon the face of the deep is deep. And nobody should be left behind to go through what the devil is planning. You see those boys in that dream locking around, locking around in black, in, in, in all the axes and demon possess those who are the demons you know can you imagine seeing your daughter in the midst of such prayer that's what the devil that's what the devil plans for those that are left behind you don't want to be left behind you don't want you don't want to be left behind to see what i saw would transpire when the other ones are taken and the other ones are left behind it will not be a portion in the name of jesus <sighs> If you pray that prayer know that our lord is your strength know that god who keeps israel will not sleep nor slumber over your life he will continue to watch over you in jesus name now the question you ask yourself is this why did why were we locked in why did the Lord allow families to spend time together in all these things, in all these things, in all these, these months. We were all locked in together, father, child, mother, parent, everybody together. He needed us to understand the importance of family. And he needed us to carry everyone along. 
I believe this is the main cause of this dream, this revelation, this vision. We weren't together, we weren't locked in together for anything else but to bond and to renew a family union and brand and bond. I led my daughter to Christ. And it's so fulfilling. <sighs> This is the reason. This is the why. I don't know what you learned out of this pandemic, lockdown, social distancing. Social distancing isn't emotional distancing. It's not family distancing. God had a plan. God has a plan. Don't joke about it. I'm speaking to you right now. Get on and ensure your daughter, your sons are on the right page as you are. I understand it can be difficult, especially when your character is saying something different. It's difficult to get the children involved. Thankfully, my children are at that age where we can talk, we can agree. I've, I've grown, I've, we've grown together to understand each other. And the moment I spoke to Z, she understood. And I thank God she knows Christ. I thank God she's made that confession unto salvation. That's all that matters. Get to your children. Pray with them. Lead them to Christ. Don't wait for anybody to do it for you. It's not the job of the pastor. It's your job as a parent to lead your children, to show them the way. That's why they are the custodian. Lead them to Christ now. Before it's too late. I don't know. Anytime I want to relax, something just happens. It seems like you, you don't have your life. I'm I'm trying to oh no, you know, joyfully dance, but this you can't it's it I danced when I saw my daughter, I was happy. That was the end result, and we made it. But there are people that won't make it. The flight, the carrier is so small, the vessel is small, it's not for everybody, but the chosen will make it. And I know and I pray that you will make it in Jesus' name. God bless you and have a productive day.